Hey everybody, we're so excited today. We have got a marriage miracle. We've been talking about that this morning, actually this afternoon, and uh, having been married 29 years, sometimes it takes a miracle in marriages. And we have Randall and Tracy Dowdy. Uh, they've been married twice to each other. Uh, their marriage fell apart once, and God did something really, truly, supernaturally amazing in both of their lives, and as a result, their lives together. And they're going to share the miracle story that they have and how that can also be your miracle story. Because if God will do it for them, he'll do it for anyone because he loves us all. So Randall, Tracy, welcome. I'm so glad to have y'all. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Really Dad. appreciate that. And I have to add that you just came out with your book, Beyond Impossible. We all need a little impossibilities to be proven in our lives. So the congratulations on the book, uh, Success. I know you've been out on the road sharing. So let's kind of jump right into this. You know, we've had, um, you know, people are really looking at life differently now that we've been through the pandemic. People want to have meaning. People want to have purpose. Um, and you've been through all of that and now you're 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 sharing blah, showing up and sharing the story so yes. tell us kind of how you ended up um at this place where you had a, a a hard divorce and now you're back blissfully together that doesn't happen very often no it doesn't and it's uh it's only you know uh the bible says that the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy and so that could only mean that the record of what he's done in our lives is a map for what he can do in other people's lives. And if he can bring us beyond brokenness, he can do it with anybody because we were two very, very broken people. Uh, right, Randall? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, before I met Tracy, I had been married and divorced twice. Uh, Tracy had also been married prior. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, we we set out with blending our families at that point. And if you've ever, ever blended a family, you know that sometimes that blender breaks. And so <laughs> yes, it's a difficult thing to I do, have. A, lot, a, a lot of stress. And uh, also a year before I met Tracy, I had suffered a brain injury from a rock climbing fall that went undiagnosed for eight years. And, uh, you know, I started to exhibit a lot of unusual behavior and that, of course, led to medications and regiments and and uh, also I started self-medicating with strip clubs and marijuana. Mm. And then along, uh, through all that chaos, uh, it, you know, we've grown very much apart and, and simply the end was in sight. Yeah. And I, you know, Looking back on it, I would say that the decay in our marriage was not 100% Randall's fault. I had experienced several lifetimes worth of trauma. Everything mm -hmm. from my brother and father committing suicide when I was 12 years old and also mm -hmm. experiencing sexual assault. And, you know, when you have those kinds of things happen, um, the instinct is often to overcorrect and micromanage everything moving forward. And I had an intense need to control every situation I was in, to draw lines and to set emotional boundaries. And I just think that, you know, most people when they're in, when they're experiencing things outside of their control, the instinct is often to take control, but really we need to give surrender control to the one who sits on the throne. But Nevertheless, that was not my mindset. And because of Randall's behavior, I filed for divorce and we were divorced after eight years of marriage. So what was it that caused, so you'd had, you know, you both had these issues going in. What was the breaking point where you're like, done, where you filed for divorce? My infidelity. Infidelity. Yes. So you not only went to strip clubs, you chose to take that a step further and have and act out an affair uh it it was not exactly an affair it was just not being uh faithful to my wife not being faithful to, to the marriage covenant and uh it was um i can't say it was totally beth i i can't in my heart blame it all on my injury because right. I, uh but i it was it was my fault no doubt uh, i think that randall was really emasculated by the traumatic brain injury and because he, sure. he was diagnosed with mental illness because the the psychiatrist did not identify that it was a traumatic brain injury and so they labeled him you know with all of these disorders so that he he was like i just can't believe i have all these disorders and it was just very emasculating for him he just spiraled his, his mm -hmm. self-esteem spiraled and so part of 
And yeah. I, you know, I was also a, a businesswoman, and I, my career was taking off during this time. And so he was seeing me travel all over the country and thriving in my career. And he, he was spiraling with just having to accept that he was mentally ill. And in reality, that's really was, wasn't what was going on. He had a traumatic brain injury that went undiagnosed, you know, for those entire eight years. But there was just a lot of toxicity as a result of that. And because of my need to, to draw lines, I just drew a line and said, I'm done. And I think back on that, you know, I wish I had not drawn those lines. I do believe that the time that we were apart, we were apart for five years. We didn't speak. Um, or see each other for five years before wow. God back together. And I really believe that he, um, he, he created some healing for me. I was able to go through a lot of self-discovery and therapy and, mm -hmm. and be able to get some therapy and God brought us back together for a reason. And mm -hmm. even though, you know, we were back together for nine years and things started to deteriorate again. And we were living in a lot of chaos. We had a lot of struggles and, and things like that. But you want to share? Yeah, I was, more? I was just going to say, you know, after the, after the divorce, I lived like a hermit in the mount, mountains of Colorado. And I, mm -hmm. I saw myself from everyone from wow. I go for weeks at a time without not seeing anybody. And um, wow. You know, it was just I stuffed my pain over and over and over because of my experience with therapists and psychiatrists. I was on like eight different psychotic meds at one time. Uh, I, wow. I one day I had eight pill bottles in, in my medicine cabinet and uh, I didn't know who I was anymore. And um, anyway. let me let me jump in there and ask you a question, because you're a veteran. I mean, you're you're you you're a Navy uh veteran and you jumped into water and you saved people. So talk about what you learned as a man about mental health, because people are in crisis today and they don't understand how to get at, you know, the right kind of help. So um, I know we, yeah. you know, ca counseling is a great thing, but I mean, what do you say to men who are trying to figure out what's what's wrong with me? Well, now I have I'll obviously have a different outlook than I did then. I just, it's not natural for a man to go and seek help in that way. It's not. A man thinks it, that he thinks it, or I thought that I could just work through it, get over it, went to the mountains and, and, and just be alone, isolate myself. I had a lot of peace there and uh, I didn't hit, I controlled my inputs there too. But as far as the seeing any psychologist or psychiatrist, uh, it's, it was, uh, it's unnatural for me and I can only, um, imagine it's unnatural for for the male population as a whole uh, yeah. i think uh, women in that way are a lot smarter than yeah. guys are yeah absolutely yeah. well and guys are not quick to share their feelings whereas we right. you know I, I like to say we girls need girls and whereas guys may be guys they don't really look for guys because yeah, you know, absolutely. we're absolutely. not going to share so all right so your marriage falls apart you know you've come to this crisis road twice You've got blended families. You've got kids involved. You've got jobs involved. I mean, this is all creating, you know, a, a, a emotional roller coasters oh, yeah. for everybody. How do I enter? Thanks. Can you see Get us? Uh oh. Locked up. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Here we go. You're back. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. I think we're unlocked. The technical world tried to lock us out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've. Uh... Are we can good? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I can see. Okay. You. Okay. We're at our, we're at our uh, our son and daughter in law's house in Dallas. So uh, normally we our internet is a problem in uh, Baja California, Mexico. So. Well, I'm the internet sure. can be a problem anywhere. I know, uh, but so, so how did God, how did God step in and begin to woo you towards him? I'm sorry. Yeah. So she's asking, uh, how did God woo us back, back together again? What was the, oh, so wow. we, it's a, it's a very beautiful story. Yeah. And I would like to kind of share some things that happened that transpired because yes, we had a supernatural encounter with mm -hmm. God in our home in, on March 13th. 2019 that lasted for 10, 10 days. days. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, I got to hear that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to let Randall share that. But leading up to this supernatural encounter, we had been back together for nine years and we had been going through a lot of struggles in our relationship. That's an understatement, don't you think? <laughs> So, no, she, actually, she was this close. I was this yeah, close yeah. to kicking Randall yeah. out for the second time. Yeah. And we were really struggling in our in our marriage. And um, it was it was a very challenging time. Yeah. It looks like we're locked up again. Hopefully uh, we're you're able to see us and hear yeah. us, Beth. There it goes. Okay. okay. Okay, you're back. Okay. I don't know what it is, but something's happening. Yeah, yeah. it's odd. Okay. Yeah. Um I'm so, so anyway, we were going, we were this close to ending our relation. We were this close to ending our relationship for the second time in 2019. We've been back together for nine years and wow. Randall and I were, we had just been through and our book details, all of these details mm -hmm. about just this up and down cycle. Randall had lost his biggest client and had to shut his doors uh, of his 25 year print marketing company. Uh-huh. And we, uh, I became the breadwinner of our family, which just created a lot of tension. You know, I was in a constant mind battle of he's not providing for you. What's wrong with you? You can do better. And, uh, we, we were just really struggling and, um, we had been, you want to share, we were in, we got in a knockdown drag out five. Oh yeah. I mean, I guess, um, we recently gotten back from a mastermind retreat and, uh, that we'd gone through, we had to knock down, drag out fight. And it, I mean, it was terrible. And again, she had told me that we were this close and I, uh, I mentally started packing my bags because when she says something, she draws a line and she means it. <laughs> and, and, um, and she went to a coffee yeah. shop to work and instead of working, you, you have to share this. Book. Yeah. I, I was, uh, I was really just wanting to plan my 2000 goals without Randall and, I was just, I'd really had it up to here, up to here with him. And um, the Lord just reminded me, he was like, you know, see Randall through my eyes. He's my child, my grace and mercy for him. And I, instead of planning out my 2019 goals, I, re I wrote Randall a heartfelt love letter. And I quoted, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I just said, you know, Randall, I really believe that we need to love each other the way God calls us to love each other. And you know, I really hope and pray that God will show you what he sees in you. And um, when I gave Randall the heartfelt letter, he just, I handed it to him and his romantic heartfelt response was. Thanks. I and mean, then, I, yeah. <laughs> and he but, just threw it and tossed yeah. it in his desk drawer. And I was like, I was so heartbroken because, you know, I was about to kick him out and God had just sh showed me, you know, keep keep on keeping on. And I think mm -hmm. too often we get in situations sometimes with our spouse when we see there's no end in sight. We see that there's no way to, um, when we're in conflict and we're not in harmony with each other, we want to give up. And we live in a society where people are so focused on um, the me, 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 what's in it for me. This isn't right. getting anything. And that's just not God's covenant. I mean, I just, I think so often, I mean, even as Christians, the divorce rate is so high, even in the Christian community. And it's because our culture has created this idea that if things are not perfect, um, there are so many options for us to just go and check and choose something else in life. Well, I want to come back, which gave me the letter. You know, yes. I read it and um, the truth is I couldn't accept the words that she wrote because the way that she felt about me was nowhere near the way I felt about myself. A couple of days later, I reread the letter again and uh, her words really wore my heart. And, uh, you know, I, I just saw things a little differently. And I'm going to fast forward to, um, I guess, the next morning. And uh, right yeah, next morning, yeah. you move on to there. Well, uh, we didn't know it at this time that God was actually already there, Beth. And, and um, uh, I suggested that we pray together. And it had been the first time in... Wow. years that we've done so and um and i you know during our prayer i, I must have prayed for our children and and unex very unexpectedly tracy put one hand on my head the other on my heart and prayed healing over me 
for the first time ever. And it was the most beautiful, the most powerful prayer I'd ever heard from her. Uh, later on that afternoon, I went to the balcony uh, to meditate, meditation turn to prayer, and uh, uh, prayer turned to tears flowing. Uh, a couple of things happened on that balcony. God told me to do the, the one thing that I swore I'd never do, that was to go to Texas to see my father, whom I hadn't spoken to in a couple of years. And, and I saw a vision, and I'd never before seen a vision. And uh, I didn't believe in those types of things. I believe that uh, I was raised uh, in a church that didn't teach the spiritual gifts. And I, I didn't believe that God spoke to people like he had just spoken to me. But no doubt, God had allowed me to see in the spirit. And I want to emphasize that I was wide awake for the entire 10 days. Every vision, everything I heard, everything I saw, it was alive. It was without bounds. It was wow. wrapped in perfection. Everything was emitting completeness and perfection. And it was, uh, I, I still don't fully understand this, but I fully understood Everything that I saw and believed, I understood it, Beth, and I believed it. But yet there was, I guess, maybe my subconscious or, or maybe I, I don't really understand, but there was something in me that kept throwing up doubts. And it was like the, a, a new part of my brain had been turned on, but maybe the old part was still rebelling. And it was like the two sides were at war with each other. And the, it was so intense that my mind felt like it was on fire. And wow. the little words were coming fast and furious. And my mind was trying to process. And at the same time, uh, I, I was, the doubts were coming out. But I will tell you that the instant, nano instant, that any form of a doubt appeared, it was extinguished. It was not possible for any untruth to be able to exist in the presence of truth. And I wow. learned that uh, you know, the truth of Jesus Christ his words were bold. They were in my face and they were loud. And it, it, it was, it, it's very, it, I mean, it was just saying, this is who I am. And uh, the, the authority that accompanied that truth, it was quiet. It was unassuming, but yet it was absolute to the nth degree. There was none higher. And it was just fully known. The thought that I didn't have any thought to question it but I couldn't have questioned it if I wanted to. It simply was not allowed. And uh, Jesus taught me a few things that I didn't know before. Um, he, he's just, he's a good dad who give, gives good gifts to his children. He hurts when we hurt, he cries when we cry. And he began to reveal himself to me who he really is and who I am to him. And uh, you know, if, I, if we could really see him for who he truly is, all we would want is to be next to him. All we would want is to have more of him. He would be everyone's best friend. Everyone would be clawing and be my best friend, be my best friend. Mm -hmm. He's that good. And his love is, is his love is piercing. I mean, it's piercing. It's relentless and it's all consuming. You can't, I I've heard about, the love of Jesus all my life. I've read the Bible a couple of times through, but you never can grasp that love. I could not. Sometimes I think I had kind of a hard head. I was a little stubborn, but the Lord needed to spend a lot of time with me to get through to me who he really is. And uh, He needed 10 days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, during that 10 days, I, I learned it's not possible for me to love my Lord any more than I do now because when you see him, you adore him and it's just, he's real. I mean, he's yeah. absolutely real and he's everything that, uh, um, everything that anybody would want. Yeah. And, and so watching Randall be transformed for 10 days was, bet. A, was a lot to take in. And we, we talked constantly during those 10 days and we didn't work for 30 days after this encounter that he had with the Lord. And, we, it took us months to unpack everything that happened. And I would say that we're not the same. We have a fresh new sense of purpose and vision. God healed all of Randall's emotional pain. He healed our marriage. 
He promised a tsunami sized tidal wave of blessing over our children and their children for generations. He began a new legacy in our family because we wow. both come from so much, you know, childhood trauma and just chaos and, you know, the divorce and just a lot of shame and guilt and pain, un, you know, un, unresolved pain in our lives. And God just, it just began to heal all of that. And, um, we, we started communicating with love, leading the conversation, and we fell back in love. And later that year, on our original wedding day, we were remarried in Israel at Christ Church in Jerusalem. And it was just... I it saw was just, that. I saw the video. It was such a fun video to watch. I'm like, oh, that's so romantic. Thank you. And so during, during this visitation, you know, it was, like I said, a lot to take in, but Randall just kept saying, God is telling me that we have to show up and tell the story, tell the whole story and not leave anything out. And, and I was like, well, what's this story we're <laughs> going to tell exactly? I just, you know, and it took some time for us to really comprehend, yeah. like, what was the reason and the purpose for God's, you know, this divine visitation that we, that we had. And I think that, you know, God loves us so much. He was there through all of our pain. He was there through all of the the things that we went through. And I think too often we just don't realize how much God is so personal. Yes. He's such a personal God and he, he loves us so much. And if, you know, now Randall and I, you know, we, we have a much better relationship. We also see how much the enemy works to destroy yes. the family. And the enemy works yeah. to destroy the marriage. And yeah. the Lord revealed he that. He comes to after it. He yeah. comes after it. And so we fight the battle. We fight the spiritual battle that's happening on a regular basis. And when we start to get in any sort of conflict or things, we, things don't aren't always going well for us, we just stop and say, you know what? This is the enemy at work right now. Let's just stop and pray. And we do. We pray. You know, in the name of Jesus, you need to go. You don't belong here. You don't belong here in our relationship. You don't belong in our house. And we're not going to allow you to wreak havoc in our flights anymore. Yeah. You know, when everything was happening, Beth, it, it's, yeah. it's not yeah. crazy like to that, that the book, uh, uh, I mean, that, that we can't, we didn't know what the story was. But um uh, and not knowing what the story was, you, it's not possible, even though God's telling you to show up and tell the story, Tracy was going, what, what's the story? <laughs> and and uh, it's during that time, and even quite some time after, everything you're looking at is from a moment to moment. It's not a 10,000 foot view and you see the complete picture because like Tracy said, I mean, some things, most every, everything came out months later, really. And, uh, and a couple of things even years later. And mm -hmm. because the intensity is so great. Well, you know how men are. They're, they're, I mean, most men are, are you know, few words, you know. And so yeah. Randall was having all of these visions and understandings that God was just, you know, he was constantly speaking to Randall. Every Randall did not eat or drink for those 10 days. He slept every night, but he didn't eat or drink. And he was just speaking in a lot of quips, you know, a lot of one liners. And I was just like, <laughs> why are you saying these things? You know, and I was, it was, I was having a hard time comprehending, but, but, you know, once I started interviewing him and saying, okay, exactly. What did you mean when you said, um, this is after God left, you know, yeah. it's been yeah. written and yeah. it's already been written. We just have, you know, time has to keep up with it. What's been written. And he, and so over time, he just started filling in all the details and it was literally within a few months. I was like, Oh, wow. You know, this is amazing. And so we literally have just, our whole focus has been on showing up and telling the story. And the story was just so precious that we wanted to perfect and, you know, or not protect, not perfect, but protect the story and, and, and share it in a way that people can truly see themselves in the story um, because yeah. we're not unique, we are not unique, and we truly believe that that God, if, like I said, if He can build, take us beyond brokenness, He can do it with anyone, and He wants to call people out of their brokenness into beauty with Him, because He can turn any really ugly, toxic, chaotic situation into um, the relationship that He wants all of us to have with each other and with Him, and, and marriage is really the the perfect. 
a mirror image of our relationship with Jesus and being his bride. Absolutely. Well, and I, I had a pastor once said, if you want your, if you want to look at all of the relationships in your life, they will all be marked at a level. into your marriage and gave you, a, I mean, you know, a divine visitation from God brings you so much closer to him. Absolutely. So what would you say to someone who's struggling in their marriage? Are they just going through the motions and they're like, man, that's for them. That's not for us. What would you say to someone? How do you invite God in in such a way that he does what you can't even possibly even ask for? Um, I, I I'll try to address that. You know, when Tracy and I, and from experience, so we um, we did what we wanted to do. We didn't, we even probably asked for God to be on our side. And how arrogant is that for God to ask yeah. Almighty God to be on our side? And right. uh, Because I, we need to be on his side. Yeah, we absolutely need to be on his side. And so we all have choices. Every day we have choices. And, mm -hmm. and those choices... Uh, Come with consequences, and uh, yeah. and those consequences are most always the result of not being in the will of God and not doing what God wants you to do. Of course, sometimes He sifts us and, and does things to bring us to an, another level of relationship with Him. Um, but yeah. I just feel like that uh, uh, if when if somebody out there is struggling, that that would be the first question I, I would ask: Are you are, are you really seeking God? And, and trying to live like he wants you to. Are you living as the world thinks you should live? Yeah, because we were. We yeah. were lukewarm when God showed up. We were not completely in his will. And some of the things that we, you know, and I think we're living in a culture today, unfortunately, where the average Christian is really has gotten sucked into cultural norms. Yeah. And they're outside of biblical values and biblical standards that God wants us to live under. And when, after God came and showed up to us, we, we had to take a, you know, a moral inventory of our lives and the way we were living our lives. And we were, you know, I was focused on my career. I was focused on how much money we had in our bank account where how much money was in our retirement account. I was focused on my looks, my image, I was focused on, you know, Randall wasn't living up to the image that I thought he should be living up to mm -hmm. and world standards. And I think we get really sucked into keeping up with the Joneses and wanting our spouses to be like somebody else's spouse or be like some character in a movie or in a TV series. Yeah. And we start getting, you know, pulled away in all these directions and doing a lot of comparisons and things like that. And that is not what God calls our marriage to be about. Right. And so we had to really clean, clean mm -hmm. ourselves up a bit because we were not living for the Lord. We were not putting him first as, and what he expects of us. And I think so often marriages are failing because we have um, expectations that are, we were never, meant to be in our marriages according to yeah, God. So true. Um, I want to add to that that no matter where anybody finds themselves in their marriage today, that God's there. He's yeah. there and uh, he wants to bring us back uh, to a right relationship with him and, and there's nothing, nothing he can't fix. If he can fix me, he can fix us. You read a book and look at all that we went through. A lot of it I brought on myself. Uh, you know, he can do it with anybody. Like Tracy said, it's everything is possible with God. We have to seek him and we know we seek him that we'll find him. But there's certainly no magic formula to a supernatural encounter. It just doesn't work like that. I count myself as the luckiest man in the world and because truthfully, I wouldn't have been fixed if God didn't fix me. We wouldn't be together if God would not have done it. And uh, wow. Well, but we also feel like he's raising up ordinary Christians yeah. to do extraordinary things for him. And, yeah. you know, Randall, uh, on the sixth day of the visitation, Randall was just communicating so many amazing, beautiful things. I said, honey, you got to start writing this down. And so he started journaling on day six and he's journaled every day for the last 900 and 70 days. 70 days. 
And the Lord started speaking to Randall at, through his pen and started speaking about the future and what, you know, just preparing us for what's coming. And we really believe that there is a revival of signs and wonders that's coming um, in the future. And Amen. the church needs to get ready for that. They need to get ready for you know, set the table and get ready to, to, to dine Absolutely. with the Lord in a glorious way here on the planet. Mm -hmm. And it's time to get our houses in order. And we believe he's going to show up supernaturally to other people to raise them up, to be part of this revival that's coming. We're just one of many, many people yeah. that God's going to come to and encounter and, and, and show himself and reveal himself in a, in a, yeah. in a miraculous way. Yeah, and we got to wrap it up, but I just want to say that anybody can go where you went, Tracy, which is the humbling of yourself to reach out and pray over your husband. You wanted to be angry. You wanted to tell him all the things you wanted to do, but you made a choice yes. to reach out and pray for him. And God comes into that. And then he, a couple of days later, makes a choice to receive that. And that is fertile ground for God to work. I mean, a humble couple before God coming at your own pace and at your own time, but then he can enter into that like, like he did. And I think that is a great way to invite God in. So let's end here. So tell everybody about your book and what people can, they can get it. And then we'll, uh, we'll have had technical difficulties. We'll have to loop back around and do this again one day, but your book is oh, at yeah, Amazon. Okay. Yep, it's at Amazon. It's called Beyond Impossible, How a Supernatural Visitation Brought New Life to a Marriage. Uh, and you can get it on Amazon. You can get ebook, uh, paperback or hardcover. And we all are going to be launching an audible version very soon. And it just launched in October. So just it's only been out for a month. And so go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. Look forward to people writing, reading it. And we just... Where, follow us. And, and you can follow us at Randall and Tracy.com. Yeah. And that's yes, Facebook. Randall and Tracy.com. Tracy yep. Randall, right? Yep. Yep. Randall and yep. Tracy on all of those social media profiles. Okay. And we're going to be uh, launching a podcast. Randall with one L. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. It's so cute. Y'all got your little, you're, you're, you're together and all of it. I'm like, they're just, they're going at it. So good for, good Thank for y'all. So Thank you, Beth, for we having really, us on your show. We thank really you for so I apologize much. to anyone who watches for the technical difficulties, but you know, as my pastor says, we've got a God who loves us and a devil who doesn't. So That's sometimes right. when you've got a, when you've got a good thing going, you know, something's coming against it, but That's thankfully right. people so will be able to watch and we, we know that this will be really good and we'll come back and do this again. That's right. Thank you, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Thank y'all for seeing it through. Thank you for writing the book. Thank you for sharing the honesty about what went on and uh, for how God visited you. And I'm just thankful to know that he'll do that with anybody. And until next time, we're going to sign out. Thank y'all so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.